Hello everyone. This is a QGIS tutorial to show you how to use the Print Composer uh, feature as well as how to export your map as an image file, an SVG file, or even as a PDF. Alright, for this example I'll go ahead and load up a shapefile of Florida using the Alpers protection and I will also go ahead and uh, add a point shapefile showing all the biomedical facilities from November 2011. Now that we have our base map, let's go ahead and start working with our, our uh, Print Composer. Now to access the Print Composer, simply go to the Project menu and scroll down until you find New Print Composer. What this will do is it will give you a little prompt to input a title. Now what this title will actually do is this will actually create a new window in QGIS in which you're allowed to actually uh, edit the way your map appears on a piece of paper. Hit OK. Alright, and here is the main Print Composer interface. As you can probably see, there are a ton of different options that Print Composer uh, allows us. I do apologize for this. I accidentally clicked the uh, other QGIS window to bring back the map. So you can see that both of them are currently active. Now what I will do right now is I will hover my cursor over each of the menus and over all the icons just you can see what's what some of their functions uh, just to see what some of their functions are so you have an, a basic idea of what you can actually do using this composer. Now all the large icons you see on screen right below uh, these menus they can also be found within the menus too. Let me, let me just oh whoops did not mean to actually hit save project that was my bad let me get back to the print composer and what now I'll do now is I'll hover o over each of the menu icons. Just like the main QGIS interface, you are allowed to also customize the way that your menu bars appear to you on screen. For instance, I could actually take this row that I'm looking at right now and move it to the left side of the screen beneath the other set of icons, or vice versa. You, if you right click, anywhere on the blank menu space you can then choose which menu options that you want to have displayed to you at any time. Now as you probably noticed there are some grayed out options along this icon bar as well as most of the atlas uh, menu uh, selections being grayed out. Uh, this is because the atlas uh, function for the print composer you can basically use it to generate a number of common maps with a common format. So in other words you can use your map as a template to produce other maps. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, however, I will not be showing that, since I mainly just want to, since I mainly just want to explore the basic functions of using a of using QGIS's Print Composer. As I'm going through these different icons, you've probably seen on the right side of the screen these five different tab options, and you're probably wondering, what exactly are those? Well, I'll just go ahead and start describing them, as my cursor will soon catch up with me. So, on the very top half of the right side of the screen, we have items in command history. Uh, whenever you import your map, or your legend, or any sort of skill bar, or any other feature for that matter, uh, they will appear here. and you and you have full control over their visibility as well as if you want to actually alter their features using the lock button and their visibility is controlled by the little eye icon. The command history tab simply keeps a log of all the activities that you have been performing on your print composer. Now for the other three tabs labeled composition, item properties, and atlas generation respectively, uh, item properties essentially are the full customization options that you can perform to any sort of map feature that, that you want. Atlas Generation allows you to create a template from your current project. And again, I will not be showing this off simply because I'm not interested in creating a template for a single map. Finally, Composition, as you probably had just seen me do, is allows you to change the background for your paper for when you actually print out or export your map. Now let's go ahead and add a new map. In order to do that, we need to click the Add New Map button located over here to the left of the screen. Click and hold the mouse button, and let's drag a big box to display our map in. Once you're finished drawing your map's data frame extent, simply let go of the mouse button and your map should appear like this. 
Now as you can see the item properties box has also been changed to allow us for full customization of this map's uh, data frame. We can also customize its rotation, uh, its font, and many many other things. But also as you know for our map it's currently off-centered so let's go ahead and uh, change the data frame extent so we can make this map centered. Let's go ahead and move this up. Just click and drag the edge and move it up. The red line that you see on screen right now is actually called a snap line, which allows for more precise vertical and horizontal alignment. But also, as you notice, my map got cut off there when trying to move the data frame, so we need to use the Move Item Content button in order to realign it. Ah, but sometimes this will happen. Sometimes QGIS will actually glitch out on you and actually move your map uh, too far up or too far down from where you originally move it. But simply use the Item Content tool to realign it in order to ensure that your map is fully uh, pictured within your data frame. Alright, let's say for instance now that you only want to export just this map since you have access to uh, say photo editing software or if you just want to only present just the map with no title, no legend, nothing. So what you can do actually is you can actually use the export tool and export it as an image, a PDF file, or even a, a SVG file. And you can see you can export them as many different types of digital files, like JPEG, TIFF, PNG. For now, though, let's go ahead and use a JPEG file. And we're, I'm just going to simply give it a very simple name. Now, also may be sure to specify where you want your uh, new image file to be located at. Conveniently for me enough, mine was actually already set in the same folder as my current data. As shown here. You may have to manually navigate to the, to the folder that you want to place the image in. And now if I double click on it, as you can see it is now a JPEG file which then I can actually import say into Microsoft PowerPoint or even Adobe uh, Photoshop for future use. But for, now, but for now let's go ahead and export it as a PDF file as well just so that you can see the difference. The process is very very similar. In fact, it's almost identical. The only difference is that you're saving it as just a PDF file. Uh, I will not be showing um, the saving of the SVG file, however, since the process is, again, very identical. Okay, so let's go ahead and spruce up this map using a title, scale bar, legend, just to make it a little more presentable than its current state. So we simply uh, click the label button and drag a box over we want where we want our label. Now in order to actually add the text you have to use the item properties dialog box shown over here. So I'll simply give this thing a title as well as mess around with the font and the format of the font as well. Make sure they're both center. Go to font. Now let's see what sort of option do we have here. As you can see there are a bunch of different options, so you could definitely have a lot of fun mixing and matching different styles. But for now, let, let's go ahead and choose Bookman. Pick this one. Okay, it looks like that's a little too large, so let's go ahead and downgrade the size. There are sometimes cases like this where you may have to actually adjust the text box in order to ensure that uh, your whole tile is visible to your audience. Let me just do some minor tweaking here to make sure my tile looks good. Now the next thing we need to add is a legend. In order to do that, we need to click the Add Legend icon on the far left side of the screen, or from one of the above menus. When you add a legend, you have to click and draw a box of where you want your legend to appear. Now for QGIS in particular, uh, depending on how many layers that your map has, your this new temporary legend will actually uh, display every single layer that you have. But thankfully through the item properties dialog box you can customize that to show which layers uh, that you want to show. We can also add the tile and font regarding our text and icons. Alright, next on the list is a scale bar which we simply click add new scale bar and right click and drag a box we just need to click on an area. As you can see it is automatically displayed in uh, kilometers let me just go ahead and center over here. Now, personally, I've never really been a big fan of having numbers uh, before the zero. 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and change that in just a bit. But as you can see here, you can actually customize the style the style of the bar itself from having single boxes to having tick marks. Now let me just go ahead and subtract the last two numbers over here. So drive them down. Uh, so basically decrease that number down to zero. So the zero starts the whole scale bar. But we can also display the scale bar in feet as well. However, as you notice, the two numbers over here also, for some odd reason, appear. Um, I want to say this is actually a slight glitch with, uh, QG with QGIS. But there's an easy remedy for this. Simply increase the numbers on the left side back to 2, then decrease from the 0, and the two numbers, on the, and the two numbers before the 0 should vanish. Alright, next on the list is to add ourselves a north arrow. Now, as far as the north arrow goes, um, these are actually pretty simplistic north arrows. However, as you can see here where it says line style, you, are, you do have a lot of free options in order to customize the arrow itself. So, so let's go ahead and check out our line options. Now we can pick from one of the preset options or simply just cut or simply just create our own. For the time being, however, I think I'll, I'll keep it as the default setting. But to ensure that people recognize that this is indeed a north arrow, I'll go ahead and add a little label with, with a letter N next to it, uh, signifying the fact that it is a north arrow. Alright, looks good enough. So now, with our new map, we can either choose to uh, send it to our printer, since we know what it looks like, or we can simply choose to export it. Uh, if you do choose to export any sort of map, which I, I actually forgot to mention this earlier, be sure to double check that your map is fully on screen. Sometimes for QGIS, only part of your map will be shown, so you have to go back and move your item content around to get it to become fully visible again. Alright then, with our map saved as a brand new PNG file, let's go ahead and double click on it to open it, so we can see, what, so we can see if our map displayed correctly. And it looks like it did. Awesome. Now, before I end this tutorial, there's one more thing I want to show that QGIS actually has a nice feature of, and that is uh, different preview options that you can uh, activate. If you go to the View menu and choose Preview and look at the right arrow options, you can see that we can actually have our map be displayed as a grayscale map, uh, a monocolor map, or even have our map displayed through two color blindness options, which for you, the map here, really gives you a sense of how your map will appear to your designated audiences in the event that you have to print grayscale maps or even if some of your viewers actually have colorblindness. In any case, this actually concludes this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching.